All right, so we just got a new OCG metagame breakdown report. So number 10 and 11. It's a pretty small one, so this uh, this video is not going to take too long. 187 top performing decks from 36 tournaments in only three countries, so it's pretty much nothing. And this is going to be, I think, the last time we have an OCG breakdown before the ban list and before their WCQs, I believe. Uh, because usually they happen before ours, if, if I recall correctly. I could be wrong, though. Maybe this is the second to last. But yeah, we are getting closer and closer to Worlds format and of course to the ban list for the OCG at least not for the TCG anyways the best deck is Ubel still but not by a long shot but only by one position and then pure snake eye rather should I say fiendsmith snake eye which is still kind of pure snake eye but they have moon of the close sky which we are not confirmed to have yet in the TCG so that is the one difference that we're gonna have and this also applies for Ubel right because they also utilize the moon of the close sky in case we're wondering what the card really brings to both decks it makes it so that you don't have to draw the Fiendsmith in order to get your Fiendsmith engine. So in other words, you can turn like generic bodies into your Fiendsmith, which allows you to go into Sequentia, into Lacrimosa, and to revive back uh, the Fiendsmith, make um, Beatrice or Caesar, etc. So you can do a lot with just generic bodies. It's pretty similar to the Orcus engine. I mean, I've, I've used this analogy tons of times in the past, so it shouldn't be anything new for you. Uh, but even without the Moon of the Close Sky, the Fiendsmith engine is still a force to be reckoned with. So in the TCG, even if we don't get it by a infinite forbidden i would still uh, seriously recommend it anyway stand by dragon okay yeah that is uh still in the top three best decks which makes sense again roku does add a little bit of consistency because they only have one prosperity not that you need it but it's always nice to have and uh, they have an additional way of synchro summoning without the use of zongdora which matters in case you are getting hit by something like the black goat laughs calling zongdora so you can't special summon it in, uh, except from the graveyard oh, there, there are still workarounds if you can go you know discard it and then revive back with fedora so it's not like the end of the world realistically genroku didn't add much the draco monster added nothing and the trap card is unplayable i don't understand why people were hyping the new cards that much because honestly the difference between tenpai dragon post and Infin infinite forbidden and tenpai dragon now is minuscule again it, there's still a little bit of impact from the the yellow monster but that's it's it's not that huge anyways voice is voice the deck is getting worse and worse and worse it has a terrible ubel matchup because the um, skull guardian interacts super poorly with ubel first of all with the continuous spell the, the i think the blessing no hold on a second the one that searches every single turn i actually forgot because it's been a while since I uh, last played against it. It forces you to only attack the ritual monsters, but Yubel has no problem with that because they want to attack over the ritual so that you take the damage instead. And the fact that Skull Guardian has 41 means that they only have to attack twice to kill you, which is terrible. And also, like, the fact that they have negates that are super reactive their only other way of like really interrupting you would be like a solemn strike which is terrible against Yubel because all their effects are activated to summon except when they want to link summon but they don't really need to do that like what are you gonna do like so you're gonna solemn strike like you're gonna use Saravis to negate the summon of phantom of Yubel sure I'm gonna go for another one again and they also have like the trap card to pop cards but again Yubel will just easily float and recover from that unless you use the trap card to pop in shilling two or higher in which case the Yubel will miss timing. You, you gotta be aware of those uh, small little details. But yeah, Voices Voice just has a terrible Yubel matchup. The Fiendsmith Snake Eye matchup is also not like super great. And the Tenpai Dragon matchup, I, I think it's like, it's not too bad. It's, it's not like a catastrophic matchup. Anyways, Runic Stun. Yes, another one of the good decks. Despia. I don't understand how this deck is doing that great in the, in the OCG. I, I think it's better in the TCG than it is in the OCG. They only have like one branded fusion, one branded opening. So yeah, way less consistency, but they have the trap card, which I think is probably the reason why they're that good. Anyways, Fire King, huge fall from grace, but again, it makes sense. The, the deck is just so much less good than Feats Miss Snake Eye. It's, uh, it's like two different worlds, honestly. Fire King is just not worth playing anymore. Rescue Ace is dog shit. I actually think this deck is crap. It's not even like tier one, not even remotely close. You, you have to play so many bricks, and unless you're going like uninterrupted, you're not really making like you're not doing much of anything like turbo ancestor resolve everything has to go your way i just don't like it at all dragon link okay sure fiendsmith chimera oh this is a great deck really really good deck i'm gonna have to cover it uh soon enough but i'm gonna have to learn a lot about this deck because i don't feel like i'm aware of it enough horse gimmick puppet the horse engine doesn't add anything uh, you can make like the rank eight easier cool it's not like it's a one card ftk or anything it makes it so that you have less good cards for going second. You lose even harder to hand shafts for no good reason. Play more bricks because now you draw happy and you're not going to be happy about it. <laughs> it just, it's shit. You can't make Photon Lord. If you could, in order to beat the hand shafts, it would be nice. But you're always locked under a gimmick puppet only. So honestly, just play pure gimmick puppet. It's just going to be better for you. I, I think, at, at the very least. But 
maybe there's like merit behind playing the Horus Engine in Gimmick Puppet in the OCG, but probably not in the TCG. Memento, another deck that I have to check. Salamangrate, sure. Uh, great deck, honestly. Uh, Centurion, very good as well. Uh, in the OCG, they don't have King Calamity anymore. It's banned over there, but it's still a thing over here. Infernoid, yes, okay. Labyrinth, Ritual Beast, Tachyon, yo. This deck's nice. White Woods, I covered this deck. The most popular build is Centurion Toy. And then after that, we got the build without Centurion, which is... I mean, it plays less bricks, I guess you can say, but it's less consistent. And it also plays through Nibiru a little less well. Fiend Smith, Magical Musketeer, that's also another cool deck. Marincess, pretty nice. Melodious Supreme King, I hate that. Sky Striker, that's... I mean, the, the deck is cool, but it sucks. Steer Elements, garbage. Adventure, whatever. The, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Yes, yeah, burn in hell. Uh, yeah, I don't care. Holy shit, only one purely. Die, I'm Raid Raptor, best deck. Uh, Red Dragon Archfiend, okay, yeah. Uh, Red Dragon Archfiend is res Resonator, by the way. And then, I uh, don't really care about those decks. Alright, cool, you bail. So basically, uh, there is nothing super spicy here. It's just that they're playing Pankratops <laughs> in the side deck in order to clear um, the Kaiser Colosseum as well as... What's his face? Quakimeru Drago. There you go, that's it. It's not spicy. It's an unsearchable one-of, so there is nothing to really cover here. And they're citing Solemn Judgment in order to beat Forbidden Droplet. Like, woo! <laughs> okay. Solemn Judgment is already seeing play in the Ubel deck, even the TCG, because it beats Dark Ruler no more, which is like the best card against Ubel. I'm gonna make a video about Board Breakers potentially coming back, because I think they're super popular at the moment uh, among, uh, among the pro players on uh, Dueling Book. But the issue is, that's usually what the pro players do before, you know, big events start. I mean, I shouldn't say that, but there's some things that I probably shouldn't say in a, in a video on YouTube, because then then people are gonna, I don't know, get a little angry. Don't jump to conclusion based on what you're seeing on Dueling Book and what people are choosing to play now because it's completely different than what people are gonna be playing during the WCQs, so just keep that in mind. Anyways, the, the rest of the, the deck is not super spicy. I mean, there's two Dark Beckoning Beasts personally. I would only play one, but I'm not gonna scold him too much for doing that. Uh, two Spirit of Ubel, I'm, I'm really back and forth on one or two is the correct number because if you draw one and you also draw another Fiend Monster with zero attack, zero defense, it's no longer a Garnet because you just shuffle it back from the hand to summon Phantom of Ubel, so it's not like the end of the world. So I think you can like get away with only playing one, but then if you get shiftered or you shift your opponent, but you probably shouldn't play shifter, honestly, especially if you only play one Spirit of Ubel. But if you do get shiftered and you lose your one of Spirit of Ubel, you have to find a way to destroy or make the Phantom of Ubel leave the field by a card effect while you have Nightmare Throne on the field, which is unrealistic as hell. So <laughs> I don't think it can really happen. So yeah, you don't want to have only one Spirit of Ubel that gets banished. You always want to have multiple copies because there's no way of getting the Spirit of Ubel from the Banished back into the field, uh, but there are ways of getting those two Ubels from the Banished back into the field because Spirit of Ubel does some in the back from the Banished. For the Fiendsmith Snake Eye deck, okay, uh, a lot of cards that, again, I just look at and I'm like, there is no shot people are going to be main decking those cards in the TCG. I know I've said that a lot, the, a lot in the past, but people are probably going to be uh, playing to a uh, Flamberge Dragon as well as one Snake Eye Diabel Star, just because if you got two Flamberge, your one of your one card combo Snake Eye Ash just does mo mo much more, and in the uh, TCG, people play way more hand shabs than in the OCG, which which sounds really funny because in the OCG they have max seed, so they have one more hand shab, but think about it. Nobody plays Mourner, uh, not a lot of people play 3 Veiler, uh, nobody main decks Nibiru, and uh, Drool and Logbird is not even that popular. So honestly, the only real staples in the OCG would be Ash, and then max seed and Imperm, and then everything else is just like extra cards that they're playing if they want to. So like one Nibiru, two Drool, one Veiler, uh, but again, it's really just because they have maxi, but in the TCG, 15 hat shops is almost the norm now, which is really sad and pathetic. So because of that, you really want to be able to consistently beat Nibiru and also do as much as possible with one single card. So I understand why in the OCG, they respect Nibiru a little less, but in the TCG, you definitely should. Like, I I'm seeing a lot of cards, a lot of key cards from the extra deck that they are absolutely not playing whatsoever. That, they, that would fa facilitate uh, how to beat Nibiru. I'm not going to say which cards, obviously. Yeah, their extra deck is just a little all over the place. It's a little greedy. They're playing Sunlight Wolf because you can go Beatrice, send Ash, and then go Sunlight Wolf for cycle it back, which is good when your opponent has board breakers instead of hand shops. So, for example, against the Despia deck. It, it's really just to diversify your array of interruptions by having, you know, ways to stop your opponent at the hand field and graveyard. So it really does make sense. It's just that in the TCG, no shot people are going to be doing that. If anything, people are going to be going Beatrice, send uh, Detach the Lacrimosa, and then send Angel of Blue Tears in order to get, like, D-Barrier from the deck. 
or another floodgate like that. Anyways, uh, I don't think there's anything else that I really have to cover here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, not really. I mean, Fiendsmith Snake Eye is just a little boring. Even though it's a great deck, it, it honestly, it is the best deck in the OCG. Even though, like, you're seeing Yubel pass it by one spot, it doesn't mean anything. Realistically, Fiendsmith Snake Eye is usually the deck that wins the events. Yubel isn't really winning all that much. It's just, like, topping like crazy. If you just look at Chengdu and Shen Yang, okay, Fiendsmith Snake Eye was doing a little better than Fiendsmith Yubel. And then Shen Yang, okay, never mind. Yeah, this one was won by uh, the first three positions were Fiendsmith Yubel. It's just that when I look at the uh, at the other ones, it's always Fiendsmith Snake Eye, Fiendsmith Snake Eye, etc. Okay, then by Dragon, this is where it gets uh, really interesting. So they uh, they have been known to play Heat Wave ever since they existed. The Heat Wave is just a really nasty card. Until the end of the next turn, neither player can normal or special summon effect monsters. Heat Wave is good in any deck going first. I'm going to make a full video just on this card because I think there is a lot that has been um, not explored enough with this card. Uh, the, the one problem with Heat Wave, though, is when you have it in going second because you think that your opponent is going to make you go first but then your opponent chooses to go first and then you draw heat wave going second then it it, it literally does nothing all right so the interesting thing about uh, heat wave is that uh, like i said the tenpai dragon is now the only one uh, the only deck that can't play it any deck that goes first could so what they're doing right now is that they're uh, choosing to go first against Ubel because the Ubel matchup for tenpai dragon is like catastrophic all their monsters float so you always have to go into warp gate in order to banish everything which is a little difficult to achieve and then like if your opponent also has like a big board and you don't have like droplet or something that is really bad lightning storm or Gekki and cards like that aren't really good against the monsters because they all float or they have like a built-in protection and stuff like that especially when they have like the freaking uh this card right here uh soul king uh, of yama so they can revive back the um, uh, unchained soul of rage that's like even worse but again like uh, they also have like varudas which is an omni negate so honestly if they have like their uh, full board you really need just droplet it's droplet or bust <laughs> it's it's really sad but what they are doing against ubel is that they're going first because it's such a bad matchup so ubel is kind of anticipating that they are also side decking heat wave so that if they're uh, going second against uh, tenpai dragon that is heat waving them they are heat waving Tenpai back in order to prevent Tenpai from OT King on turn three, meaning that Yubel can play on turn four and kill Tenpai. It's very logical, so I don't know why I'm like overcomplicating it for no reason. I assume that you understand. If you don't, uh, you're stupid. And uh, yeah, let's move on. Uh, in conclusion, the uh, Fiendsmith Yubel, Fiendsmith Snake Eye, and Tenpai Dragon deck are obviously the best decks. It's no shit. I mean, this this has been the case for like what uh, several weeks. Yeah, it's just like the, the position changes a little bit, but like who cares? Even when I click on this, yeah. It's like Tenpai, Vinsmith Snake Eye, Despia, Tenpai, Centurion, Marinsus. Who cares? Inclusion, nobody cares. This format sucks. And I can't wait until we get a ban list. All right, that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, blah, 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 blah. And I'll see you guys very soon. Peace.